Welcome to Bible Reveal, where we dive into stories and chapters of the Bible. Genesis chapter 44, the second test. When his brothers were ready to leave, Joseph gave these instructions to his palace manager. Fill each of their sacks with as much grain as they can carry and put each man's money back into his sack. Then put my personal silver cup at the top of the youngest brother's sack, along with the money for his grain. So the manager did as Joseph instructed him. The brothers were up at dawn and were sent on their journey with their loaded donkeys. But when they had gone only a short distance and were barely out of the city, Joseph said to his palace manager, Chase after them and stop them. When you catch up with them, ask them, why have you repaid my kindness with such evil? Why have you stolen my master's silver cup, which he uses to predict the future? What a wicked thing you have done. When the palace manager caught up with the men, he spoke to them as he had been instructed. What are you talking about? The brothers responded. We are your servants and would never do such a thing. Didn't we return the money we found in our sacks? We brought it back all the way from the land of Canaan. Why would we steal silver or gold from your master's house? If you find his cup with any one of us, let that man die. And all the rest of us, my lord, will be your slaves. That's fair, the man replied. But only the one who stole the cup will be my slave. The rest of you may go free. They all quickly took their sacks from the backs of their donkeys and opened them. The palace manager searched the brother's sacks from the oldest to the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. When the brothers saw this, they tore their clothing in despair. Then they loaded their donkeys again and returned to the city. Joseph was still in his palace when Judah and his brothers arrived, and they fell to the ground before him. What have you done? Joseph demanded. Don't you know that a man like me can predict the future? Judah answered, Oh, my Lord, what can we say to you? How can we explain this? How can we prove our innocence? God is punishing us for our sins. My Lord, we have all returned to be your slaves, all of us, not just our brother who had your cup in his sack. No, Joseph said, I would never do such a thing. Only the man who stole the cup will be my slave. The rest of you may go back to your father in peace. Then Judah stepped forward and said, Please, my lord, let your servant say just one word to you. Please do not be angry with me, even though you are as powerful as Pharaoh himself. My lord, previously you asked us, your servants, Do you have a father or a brother? And we responded, Yes, my lord, we have a father who is an old man, and his youngest son is a child of his old age. His full brother is dead and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him very much. And you said to us, Bring him here so I can see him with my own eyes. But we said to you, My lord, the boy cannot leave his father, for his father would die. But you told us, Unless your youngest brother comes with you, you will never see my face again. So we returned to your servant, our father, and told him what you had said. Later, when he said, go back again and buy us more food, we replied, we can't go unless you let our youngest brother go with us. We'll never get to see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then my father said to us, as you know, my wife had two sons, and one of them went away and never returned. Doubtless he was torn to pieces by some wild animal. I've never seen him since. Now if you take his brother away from me, and any harm comes to him, you will send this grieving white-haired man to his grave. And now, my lord, I cannot go back to my father without the boy. Our father's life is bound up in the boy's life. If he sees that the boy is not with us, our father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending that grieving white-haired man to his grave. My lord, I guaranteed to my father that I would take care of the boy. I told him, If I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. So please, my lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy, and let the boy return with his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? 
I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. So what can we learn from this chapter? Genesis chapter 44 offers several valuable lessons for Christians. The chapter continues the narrative of Joseph and his brothers, highlighting themes of integrity, forgiveness, and divine providence. One key lesson from Genesis 44 is the importance of integrity and honesty in our actions. In this chapter, Joseph tests his brother's character by planting a silver cup in Benjamin's sack and accusing him of theft. The brothers, unaware of Joseph's true identity, respond with genuine concern and offer to be punished if the cup is found among them. This demonstrates their growth and change since their betrayal of Joseph as they now display a willingness to take responsibility for their actions and protect their youngest brother. Additionally, Genesis 44 underscores the theme of divine providence and God's sovereignty over human events. Throughout the chapter, we see God's hand at work, guiding and directing the circumstances to bring about His purposes. Despite the brothers' intentions, God ultimately uses their actions to fulfill His plan of reconciliation and redemption. Overall, Genesis 44 teaches Christians the importance of integrity, forgiveness, and trust in God's providence. It encourages us to act with honesty and integrity in our dealings with others, to extend forgiveness and seek reconciliation in broken relationships, and to trust in God's sovereign control over all aspects of our lives. Through the story of Joseph and his brothers, we are reminded of God's faithfulness and his ability to bring beauty out of brokenness. Join us at Bible Revealed as we explore the Bible chapter by chapter. Thank you and God bless you.